in the field of geography, we learn in school about the coherent water cycle. This was first described by Sir Bernard Palissy in 1580. And he said, how does water evaporate from the ocean, forms clouds, the clouds move in the interior, how does it fall as rain, the rainwater flows into the ocean, and the cycle is completed. Previously, people thought in the 7th century BC, phase of Meletus, he said that the spray of the ocean was picked up by the wind and it fell into the interior as rain. People did not know how did the underground water, the springs, where did they come from? So, they thought that due to the pressure of the winds on the water, the thrust of the winds on the water, it fell into the interior as rain. And this rainwater seeped into the soil and returned to the ocean through a secret passage, the abyss, which was known at the time of the plateau as Tartarus. People believed in this theory of Descartes even till as late as 17th century. And philosophers like Aristotle's theory was believed till as late as 19th century that water vapor evaporated from the soil, it condensed in mountain cavern, and these mountain cavern formed lakes which fed the spring water. Today we know that the underground water, the springs, it is due to the seepage of the rainwater. And the Quran says that in Surah Al Zumur, chapter number 39, verse number 21. Fears thou not that it is Allah who sends down rain from the sky and seeps it in the sources in the ground, in the springs in the earth and causes sown field of various colors to grow. The message is repeated in Surah Room, chapter number 30, verse number 24. Allah sends down rain and dead earth brings it back to life. The Quran says in Surah Mu'minun, Chapter number 23, verse number 18, that it is Allah who sends down rain in due measure. We are able to store it and we are also able to easily drain it. The Quran says in Surah Al Hijr, chapter number 15, verse number 22, it says that we send fecundating winds, wind impregnating, and cause rain to descend from the sky and give you water in due measure. The Arabic word lawaki used here is the plural of laki derived from lakaha which means to impregnate or to fecundate. The winds carrying the pollen, they impregnate the clouds and then rain falls. The wind causes the clouds to merge. There's condensation, there's lightning and rain falls from the clouds. The Quran describes the complete water cycle. How does the water evaporate? How it forms clouds? How it moves in the interior? How it falls down? How it flows back into the ocean? In several places. In Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 43. In Surah Naba, chapter number 78, verse number 12 to 14. As well as in Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse number 48. The Holy Quran says in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 43, that we send mountain masses of clouds. What does the Quran mean by saying we send mountain masses of clouds? Today, if anyone has been traveling in an aeroplane, he will realize that when the aeroplane goes above the clouds and he looks at the clouds beneath, he will see that the clouds appear as mountain masses. Quran has said this 1400 years ago. There wasn't an aeroplane 1400 years ago. Quran describes hydrology and water cycle in several places in great detail. It's mentioned in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 9. In Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 57. In Surah Rod, chapter number 13, verse number 17. In Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 48 and 49. In Surah Fatir, chapter number 35, verse number 9. In Surah Yasin, chapter number 36, verse number 34. In Surah Jashia, chapter number 45, verse number 5. In Surah Qaf, chapter number 50, verse number 9 and 10. In Surah Waqiyah, chapter number 56, verse number 68 to 70. As well as in Surah Mulk, 
chapter number 67, verse number 30. The Quran describes the hydrology and water cycle in great detail.